Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for joining us again at God's Way Community Church. Amen. We pray that the Lord is blessing you uh, during this time. Amen. We are going to uh, uh, go into the Word of God uh, today, and we pray that the Lord will bless you for the message that we have today. We are always praying that God will give us what we would have uh, for this time, that we are concerned about the souls of the world, who are concerned about the things that are happening. And it is my desire that God will give us his word to feed us in these uh, last days. So we're going to go on with that today. Today is Sunday. Amen. We thank God for the beautiful weather we've been having. Amen. We pray for, for you and uh, are out there. I just want to say before I get started with my message today, I want to say thank you to all of you who are listening to the videos at home. I want to say thank you for the people who have uh, so graciously decided from their heart that they were going to support this ministry and they're putting out the word of God. Amen. We know that you don't have to do that and we appreciate you for doing that. We certainly pray a blessing upon you and your family and those that are there that for your, your time, your effort, your finances, as well as your love and your prayers. Amen. Because we know that God, amen, is going to bless those that bless his house. Amen. Amen. We thank you for that. Amen. We thank God that there are people who care about the, uh, the putting out of the word of God, the dispensing of the gospel. Amen. Because we are certainly in a time that we need that. Amen. So we're going to go into the word of God today. Turn in your Bibles if you're at home and you have your Bible with you. Turn in your Bible to the book of Romans chapter number 13 and we're going to begin reading there. Uh, we pray that God will anoint us through this, this message and uh, uh, give us what we should have for today. Romans chapter number 13 verse number 11 through including 14 is what our text is going to be for today. And we're going to pick up at verse number 11 and I will read that. So follow along if you would please. And it reads, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Amen. Verse number 12. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. Amen. Pray with me, if you would, please, as while I pray God's blessing upon this message today. Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory. God, we come before you today as a bad parent, children before a good parent. God, because we know you are the God that can deliver us and save us and keep us where we need to be. Father, we ask your hand upon this message, your hand upon the hearers, your hand upon the speaker, your hand upon those that will be blessed. And God, we ask you to bring us to a place that we will repent of our sins, change our minds, and walk worthy in your precious sight. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we magnify your name. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we say amen and amen and amen. We thank God for you again being here again. Thank you uh, for listening in. Thank you for supporting of the ministry and so on and so forth. God is going to bless you and we pray a special blessing on you and your families. Amen for what you've already done. Amen. I'm going to use a message for today. The subject for today is, is high time. Amen. Is high time. Amen. Uh, we, uh, we, I was in my office uh, just the other day, a few days ago, I was in the office doing a little work here, studying at the church, and, uh, and while I was sitting at the desk there, my mind deep and engrossed in whatever I was studying, amen, getting prepared for some lesson or something, amen, the building started to shake and move, amen. It was as if somebody had bent over a box and grabbed the box and was shaking it so that they could loose the contents on the inside, amen. But, uh, so by the, by the time I got my wits together, I said, oh man, what's going on? So by the time I got my wits together, I realized that there had been an earthquake, Amen. I got on the phone and called my wife and I, oh, did you feel that? She said, oh, yes, there was an earthquake in a place, a little place called Lone Pine. 
in California, which is not very far from where we are today in Fresno. Amen. But, uh, amen. God did some shaking up. Amen. And he, uh, whatever he did to shake the ground in Long Pine didn't stay in Long Pine alone. Amen. It moved out to other places. Amen. So as I, as that happened, uh, and, and the, the trimmering stopped and the building stopped moving, I got up to walk around to see if there was any damage and everything seemed to be all right. But I was fascinated and, and at the same time awed by how easily God can come in and shake us up uh, and, and, and move us around at his will. I was uh, fascinated at how easily God can take a building and twist it and turn it as if it's just, just a little rag. And, and, and my mind went as I was sitting there thinking of this tremor that I had just experienced, how quickly the time will come when God will suddenly come upon us and require my soul. I begin to think about how this could have been the day that God could have said to me, Brother Bacon, your time is up. Amen. I begin to think about how the time, uh, we look at the clock and we, we think we all have more time than we do. Amen. I always tell my children uh, that they should guard their time because time is a precious thing. Time is something that eats away uh, quickly and we don't realize how much of it has been spent. Before we look around, we know that the time is gone. Amen. How many times have you done that? Have you looked around at the clock thinking that you had a certain amount of time, but before you know it, you looked at the clock and all that you thought you had had slipped away. Amen. And so I begin to think about that day when we had that tremor, that earthquake. I believe uh, I believe the news said it was uh, 5.4 or 5 point something uh, on the Richter scale. I'm not, not really sure what damage that was done down in Long Pine, but I can tell you one thing. God awakened my thoughts to the fact that uh, we need to be concerned about something even though we're in the midst of Corona, even though we are concerned about what is going on in the populace we're concerned about what the government is doing. We're concerned about the things that are happening across the seas. I want to tell you today to draw your focus in. I felt like God wanted me to come to you and let you know that it's time for us to draw our minds in on the most important thing. The soul of man is at stake here and that it is high time for us to begin to look on the things that are righteous. Amen. So that is our message today. It's high time. The Apostle Paul began to preach and and as he writes the letter to the Roman church, look what he says here in verse number 11. He says, and knowing the time, Paul is starting off assuming that the Christians know the time. Uh, there's somebody in the audience today that is sitting in your living room. You may not know what time it is. You may not realize that tomorrow God's going to call you into judgment. Hello, somebody. Somebody, I was going to tell you right now, before this message is over, somebody's going to be called in to give an account of their soul. I want to tell you that before this day is out, souls will go on to see the Lord. They will slip the surely bonds of earth and stand before the presence of the Almighty God. Before the night is done, the time will be up. I wonder how many people that are listening to the word of God know what the time is. Paul said, and knowing the time, it is important for us to ask the question, do we know the time? Are we cognizant of the time? Paul said, and knowing the time. And then he goes on and says, that now is the time. I want you to understand that the Paul puts an immediacy on the message. He says, now is the time. He tells us that it's not tomorrow, it's now. When we think about the word now, we don't think about doing something later on. We think about at this present moment, at this juncture that we are. See, some of us are sitting in our chairs and we're thinking, well, when this coronavirus is over, I think I'll return to church. I'm going to tell you something, friend. Somebody's not going to make it through the coronavirus. Somebody's not going to make it back to the church house. Somebody's not going to make it back to Bethel. Somebody's not going to make it so they'll sit in the pew again. Now is the time. And I want to let you know that God is saying, it's high time. It's not time for us to look around. It's not time for us to get worried about the wrong thing. But now, Paul said, it's the time. And then Paul goes on and says, for us to do what? What is it time for us to do, Brother Paul, to awake out of sleep? I wish I had somebody that understood what I'm talking about. The world is asleep. Hello, somebody. There are many people that we see walking every day that are asleep. No, I'm not talking about, the, uh, uh, I'm not talking about sleepwalking in the physical sense. But I'm talking about the spiritual sense. Paul said it's time for us to walk awake 
out of sleep. And he goes on and says, listen, you are in a spiritual love. Hey, it's time for us to stop being uh, lackadaisical about our spiritual condition. Somebody says, I know I need to go to church. I know I need to repent of my sins. Maybe I'll do it a little later. Uh, every time church says, it's amazing how every time it's time for us to go to church or get right with God, we kind of push it off and kick it down the road. Isn't it amazing how something, some of us know how that is. We're, we're, we're perpetual procrastinators is what I call us. Uh, we keep putting things off that we know we need to do. But friend, let me tell you something, Paul writes this letter and he's very serious and he said listen this is not something that you need to put off it's high time he said it's time for you to wake up it's time for you to get your mind right it's time for us to look around and we see things happening on the earth it's time for us to realize that one day we're not going to be reading somebody else's name in the obituary one day our name is going to be in there one day we're going to pick up the newspaper and we're going to realize that everything that the Lord has said is coming to pass listen and friend, it's high time. We need to talk about that. And Paul's going to wake out of sleep. For why? Why do we need to wake up? And he gives that to us in the very next line. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Let me help somebody right here before I go on with this message. We need to understand that it's high time. Somebody said, well, pastor, you know, I've heard about the Lord coming for so many years now. Everybody keeps telling me that, and I haven't seen him come yet. And the Bible tells us that there are going to be many people who are saying that. Peter even said, uh, so some of the scoffers are saying, uh, where, are, where is it the promise of his coming? For all things are the same since the fathers fell asleep. But friend, let me tell you something. One day there's not going to be any preaching. One day there won't be a ministry. One day there'll be no church for us to go to. One day there'll be no coronavirus. One day there'll be no situation because God's going to bring it to close, friend. What he has started, he's going to bring an end to. And I want to tell you, today is high time. What does it mean when we say it's high time? Listen, years ago when the farmers were in the field, the word high time comes and Paul is using it in this context to explain our soul and our condition. But years ago, farmers knew that when they were plowing in the fields, there was a particular time of day. If you hadn't gotten a certain amount of work done, you had better get busy right now because the sun is going to catch you. Amen. Paul was talking about that time and people are listening to Paul. They understood when Paul said it's high time. That was a phrase that was used to say whatever you haven't done, you need to get busy doing it. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody right now. Whatever you haven't done for your soul, you need to get busy doing it. Whatever you haven't done for God, you need to get busy doing it. Whatever you haven't done for eternity, you need to get busy doing it. Whatever you haven't done to repent and be baptized, you need to repent and get baptized right now because it's the high time. It is not time for us to put it off any longer. The word high time, the phrase for high time came to mean it was overdue. It's so important that it's already past the time. In other words, you're late. Paul said you're late. It's high time. The Apostle Paul was a man who lived in urgency. His life was a life that was urgent. He lived that way. He lived with his eye on eternity. Oh, I know somebody sitting in their living room saying, but Brother Bacon, we live on planet Earth. We got to pay attention to what's going on. Oh, I know what you got to pay attention. Nobody's saying don't pray. Nobody's saying we shouldn't be uh, take care of our children. Nobody's saying you can't go to school. Nobody's saying you can't uh, do the things you want to do. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying that we should look at the news and disregard what's happening in the world. Nobody's saying that we shouldn't want social change. Nobody's saying that we shouldn't want to come together and stop the rioting and the protesting and people mistreating each other. No, we should be concerned about our government. We should be concerned about our children. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm as concerned as you are, but my soul is crying out from the inside and it's telling me that one day God's going to shake things up just like he shook the building up. One day God's going to say, you don't have any more time, Brother Bacon, to get this right. It's high time that we put the main thing as the main thing. That we put the thing that we had on the bottom and we raise it to the top. It's high time that we give God some praise. It's high time that we worship him. Because one day God's going to say, you have no more time. It's high time. It is that moment of our life that we need to be serious I thought to myself, 
as I was sitting after that whole tremor went on. I thought about what would have happened if that was my last moment. What's going to happen to the house of God? What would happen to this or to that? Sometimes God's got to get us to a point that we begin to reflect because we can get so caught up and so fixated and enthralled on the things that are in front of us that we can't see what's down the road in eternity. Hello, somebody. This is what Brother Paul is saying. We're so concerned about our fishing trip that we don't know about our eternity trip. We're so concerned about what we're going to get tomorrow that we're not realizing what we're going to get afar off. We're so concerned about going shopping uh, that we don't know we're not even going to get a chance to wear those garments. Uh, we're so concerned about how much money we're going to make uh, that we don't realize that God has all the finances in the world uh, and he can supply, supply all your needs. Uh, we're so concerned about eating and drinking uh, that we don't realize that the kingdom of God is at hand and that one day God is going to say, hey, you don't have any more time. Uh, we've got to understand something, saints. Uh, it's high time uh, that we tell the Lord, uh, I'm tired of living the way I'm living and I want to do something different because I know that sooner or later you're going to say the time is up. Paul begins to talk about it and he said it's high time. It's the time when we got to get urgent. Listen to what he tells us here. He says this is why the night is far spent. When we think of the word far spent we think of something that's gone. It's almost morning time. He said the night it's far spent. In other words, you've been living the way you're living for a long time. I wish I could help somebody now. Some of you have been telling God for a long time. God, if you'll bless me with this, I'll get right. God, if you'll give me the job I want, I'll get right. If you'll give me the husband I want, I'll get right. If you'll give me this, I'll get right. And you've been living in the night a long time. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. It's far spent. It's almost over. And I'm going to tell you this. It's time for you to realize that there's some Something more important than you going to work every day. There's something more important than worrying about what's on the news. There's something more important than worrying about what somebody down the hall is going to do. There's something more important than worrying about what people across the hall are saying about you. It's high time because the night is far spent. Our souls are the most important thing we have and they are at stake, my friend. And we need to understand this, that God is telling us it's high time that we get our house in order. It's time for us to realize that there are things that are more important than the things that we've made number one. Oh, I know somebody is going to say, are you saying that we should just forget about this pandemic? No, friend. I think you should use this pandemic to help it open your spiritual eyes. <laughs> I don't think you should forget about it at all. I think it should be a sign. The Bible talks about signs, you know. Jesus talked about that in Luke chapter 21. You shall see signs. There should be signs in what? And in the heavens and in the stars. There's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. Jesus talked about that. Oh, don't forget about the pandemic. Let it inspire you. Don't forget about the disease. Let it motivate you. Don't forget about those that are dying. Let it cause you to action. Don't forget about the people who are in violence. Let it move you to peace. Don't forget about the things that are breaking apart. Let it make you come together with God. Don't forget about those things that are shaking the earth. Let it cause you to be shaken and moved to Jesus. Don't forget about those things that are breaking down. Let it move you to be built up by the Lord. Don't forget about those things that are tearing apart. Let it move you to be brought together with God. Don't forget about any of those things, but use them to understand that the night is far spent and it's time for me to get motivated to seek after the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget about any of it. Use it to inspire you, to motivate you, to do what God have you to do. Listen to what Paul says. He gives us some parameters here, some suggestions, and he tells us what to do. In verse number 12, he goes on and talks about this. He says, let us therefore cast off 
the works of darkness. This is what we need to do, saints. We need to cast off the works of darkness. I want somebody to, say, to think about this for a moment. We've got things in darkness. Our life, when Paul talks about darkness, he is referring to a life of sin. Come on, somebody. See, nowadays, can I help somebody? Nowadays, we've gotten to the point that, that churches have become so sophisticated that we don't want to say sin is sin. Hello, somebody. We don't want to talk about sin as what it is, but I want you to know that sin is a reproach, that God hates sin. Whatever we're living in, that is not like God. God. He is telling us to put it away. It's time for us, Paul said, to cast away the things of darkness. Put away the things we used to do. Somebody gets up in the morning, the first thing they do is grab a Jack Daniels bottle. Put it away. Somebody get up and they got to have a cigarette before they can go somewhere. Put it away. Somebody get up and they got to go sleep with you know who before they get started. Put it away. Somebody's getting up and they got to go do the things they used to do in their addiction. Put it away and become addicted to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's some things that in our past, our dark world that we live in, that we need to understand. Paul said, lay it aside. Hebrews chapter number 12, you'll find this. He said, let us lay aside the things that hinder us and do what? Run with patience the race that is set before us. We need to lay aside the things that cause us to fall away from God. Lay aside those things, he said. The sin that does so easily beset us. It's time for us to get serious about the main thing. I don't know about you, but it does me no good. I see people all the time. So many beautiful homes. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with having a good home. Job was the richest man in the East, but Job had us beat. Why? He kept his money in the right place. His money never took precedence over God. But I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing wrong with having certain things. But sometimes the deceitfulness of riches, sometimes when we got a lot, we forget God a lot. Sometimes when we grow healthy, we forget that God has given us health. Sometimes when we got a gift, we forget the gift giver. Sometimes when God has blessed us, we forget that he's the blesser. Sometimes when he's moved us forward, we leave him in the back. Sometimes when God has picked us up, we put him down. And I want to tell you something. It's time that we reverse these roles and put away the things of darkness and begin to understand that God wants us to understand the time is growing short. The time is shortening down. The time is coming to a close. The time is where we should wake up. The time is where we need to get renewed. The time is where we need revival. The time is where we need to cry out to God because it's high time that we get our lives where God wants us to be. It's high time for the right thing. Paul said, lay aside those things. Cast off the works of darkness. Huh? Put those things of the dark behind us. He goes on further to give us a little bit more advice. Listen to what he says. And he talks about what things we should do. Put on the armor of light. When you begin to talk about the armor of light, my mind goes to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number 6, where Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. Listen, when you get ready to go out of your house and get dressed to go somewhere, you don't just throw on anything, do you? I hope you don't. <laughs> Amen. When you got somewhere to go, you got to get dressed properly. Right? Now, I remember when I was a little boy growing up in my father's house, he never believed and going out half dressed. In fact, he believed you should get up and get ready in the morning when you first get up so that you're ready to go do whatever you need to do for the rest of the day. Amen. You know, so you know how it is. Sometimes now we, we get up and we lounge in our pajamas till you know two or three. We just kind of kicking back. And my, my dad didn't believe in that. He believed, amen. He believed in putting something on so that you didn't have to you didn't have to run when the doorbell rang to run around to try to get yourself ready. Why? Because something may happen that you don't have time to run around. Isn't that right? How many times have I heard of people just just several years back? There was a man here in our city or a city near close to us that was preaching a, a sermon, and right after he finished preaching, he fell dead right in the church in this place. I'm not talking about something way off in another country. I'm talking about something a couple of miles from my house uh, that he was preaching uh, and fell dead right after that. Friend, you don't ever know when God's going to say uh, this is your last day. You never know what he's going to say. That soul that I gave you uh, is going to re be required of you tonight. Uh, this night, my friend, uh, is the time that you're going to stand before God. Uh, and here we are worried 
about so many other things. But Paul said, put on the armor of light. In other words, walk worthy. Paul said in one scripture, see that you therefore walk circumspectly before the Lord. What does that mean? Walk in a way that is pleasing. The word circumspectly means that which is appropriate. Walk in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. He said, listen, because you don't have very much time, we can't afford to be caught off guard. Have you ever gone to the store to buy something and got up to the cash register and had no money? Amen. And you left your wallet to the house. You didn't have time to go back. There's a line of people waiting to buy their stuff. And you felt so embarrassed. I know I've been there. Well, I didn't have the wallet. And you had to just kind of rake everything off and not even go get the stuff. Because you had to drive all the way back to the house. Why? Because you forgot to get everything you needed when you left the house. Friend, let me tell you something. It's time for us not to forget any part of our holy garment. It's time for us not to forget any part of the garment of God. It's time for us not to forget our shoes. It's time for us not to forget the hell of salvation. It's time for us not to forget the breastplate of righteousness. It's time for us not to forget the sword of faith. It's time for us to go in the whole arm of God to get completely dressed, to get fully ready because the time is high time. It's already later than we need to be moving, so we need to get moving for God. It's high time. High is at the peak the day is hot. My father used to tell me when I was a child, don't sleep all day and then go try to cut grass in the middle of the day. Get up early. Go while it's cool. Get it done. You know what I mean? Somebody know what I'm talking about. Get that work done while it's cool. Why? After a while, it's going to be so hot, you can't even stand the heat. Friend, let me tell you something. Things are changing in this world all the time. Thank God for Jesus who's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hey, we can we, we can depend on things to change. Your friendships might change. Your, your money might change. But Jesus is never going to change on you. It's high time for you to recognize that the only stable thing you got is your relationship with God. The only thing that's going to be a, a surety is your salvation in the Lord. The only thing you can count on for real is that you're going to meet Jesus someday and give account to everything that's done in this body. It's high time that we realize there's something more important in this world than taking care of just the natural. Oh, I'm not saying we should leave the natural, don't do anything about it. I'm saying we need to put it in perspective. We need to understand where it needs to belong on the priority list. Our soul should be number one. Paul said, put on the whole armor of God. I want you to listen to the thing Brother Paul said in this next part. He says, listen, not chambering a wantonness. Now somebody may ask what chambering a wantonness is. Chambering it has to do with sexual lewdness, looseness of the, of the body in a sexual way. Paul said, put that away from you. Wantonness, lewdness, and, 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 and partying and this sort of thing. Paul said, put it away. Some of us, uh, I, I, I hope this is none of you listening, uh, but some, some people are so excited about getting back out after they let down the standard a little bit for Corona so they can get out and do their thing in the club, uh, so they can get out and have a great party. Friend, let me tell you something. Before you know it, the Lord may say, uh, your time is up. Uh, it's high time not for us to get loose, uh, but to get more chastity toward God, uh, to put on the whole armor of God. And then he said, listen, uh, he said, don't go into strife and the enemy. There's fighting everywhere. If you're all you have to do is take note of what's going on in India, what's going on at the border of China, what's going on in Mogadishu, what's going on in Bangladesh, what's going on there in San Francisco, what's going on over in New York. All you got to do is look around the globe and you'll see things happening all over the world. The signs are evident that we need to realize that the time is winding up. It's high time for us to get our lives together so that we can come to the Lord the way he wants us to be. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready when the Lord comes. I want to be ready. And Paul says, this is what you do then. Put away all that stuff. In verse number 14, he gives us his final solution. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision. Hear me now. 
put you on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Paul said, listen, this is the solution. When you get dressed, get dressed with the right thing. Put on the Lord Jesus. Somebody said, well, Brother Bacon, how do I do that? Galatians chapter number 3, verse 27. Paul said, no, you're not. As many of you that have been baptized into Christ have put him on. Wait a minute, somebody. You mean to tell me if I put on that name, I've got him on? Oh, yes. See, don't, see can I help you? I know this is not a Bible class, but I think I'm going to stop right here and do a little bit of teaching. Don't you let anybody tell you that you don't need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Because Paul said when you get baptized in that name, you put him on. So if you want the Lord on you and you want to be on the Lord, then you need to be baptized in his name. Hello, somebody. That name is going to give you the blood that's going to be applied to your life. He's going to give you the remission of sins. And if you repent, the Bible says, God will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Don't let anybody tell you it's high time we stop believing fairy tales and start believing what the Word of God says. It's high time for us to look from the Bible for ourselves and understand that God, through his grace and through his mercy, through his love and his kindness has dispensed unto us the word of God. Paul said it is this dispensation of grace that we have. In this dispensation, he's given us the grace. And through faith, we become obedient to the word of God. I want you to know that it's high time for us to begin to look over the word and understand that God is going to require of us the life that we have lived. It's high time to put him on. Get dressed with the right thing. There are some people when they get ready to go out stepping out of town, they may spend hundreds on a nice suit. They may spend hundreds on a nice outfit. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But how much is our soul worth? How much is it worth that I'm ready to see the Lord? How much is my soul really worth? I can give you an answer from Jesus' perspective. He said, what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? That tells me that my soul is worth more than all the money that there is. My soul is worth more than all the fine uh, 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 promotions I can get from my job. My soul is worth more than all the material things. Uh, somebody said, Brother Bacon, I want to buy a boat. I got to have a camper. I need some motorcycles for my kids. Friend, let me tell you something. All those things are going to pass away one day. And you're not going to be able to get a dime for any of that stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. Your soul is going to live forever somewhere. And I just came to tell you today that in the midst of Corona, don't let Corona consume you. Don't let what's going on in the world consume you. Don't let what things going on in the government consume you. Don't let the stresses that you see in the protests consume you. Don't let the racial divide consume you. Don't let the things that are happening around your neighborhood consume you. I want you to get your mindset that it's high time for you to be right with God because one day God is going to come back and require our souls. Just the other day, I think it was about four day, three or four days ago. About four or five houses down from our house in the broad open daylight, there was an armed robbery. From what I understand, somebody went to put something on eBay to sell it. People showed up at the door to look at the goods and ran off with the goods. The neighbor chased them in the middle of the daylight. And in broad open daylight, they turned around and fired shots in the neighborhood. Thank God nobody in our neighborhood's children was running around. They, nobody was killed. Thank God for that. Personally, I would have just let them have the merchandise. But anyway, but I, what am I saying? It could have been somebody's last day. It could, that bullet could have took anybody. It had no name on it. It doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care. Let me tell you something. When it's our time to go, God's not going to worry about what, what group we're in. He's not going to worry about our skin color. He's not going to People are arguing about whether Jesus was black or white. I know one thing. He was Jesus. And he still is. Whatever color he was, he's coming from my soul. Oh, he, we, should, we should take down this sign and put up that sign. i tell you what we should do. We should go down on our knees and seek the Lord. Because all that other stuff is not going to matter if our soul is not right with God. Get on the right team. Get geared with the right thing. Put on the right garment and leave that other stuff to somebody else because one day God is going to come for your soul. It's high time. Paul said this is the solution. Put on the Lord. Peter began to preach that message on the day of Pentecost and he told him repent and be baptized. 
He told him from the beginning, put the Lord on. Get him on. My Lord. Why? Because you never know when somebody's going to come. If you go into a building, do you know why you can't shout fire in a building? You can't get on an airplane and say fire. You know why? Because people recognize when they hear the word fire, that means move. There's something hot coming. You're going to die. You don't have to say anything else if you say that word around people. Fire! Man, it'll clear the building faster than you can. <laughs> you want to see people moving? You just yell, fire! Everybody, man, there'll be nobody in church. You get up and start yelling that. That's the kind of urgency we ought to move with when it comes to us coming to the altar. Isn't that right? That's the kind of urgency we should seek the Lord with. It's high time. I don't want God to come and say, you know what? You don't have any more time left. One day I told my son, I said, remember this. Before he departed and went to the military, my two, two oldest sons, before they left, I told him, remember this. Get busy doing what you want to do and what you need to do. Because one day you're going to wake up and realize there's no more time now. Amen? Some of us sitting in our living rooms listening to this message, one day you're going to wake up and realize there's no more time now. And I want to let you know something. God has sent me to tell you that it's high time for us to wake out of sleep. We've been sleeping too long. There are some people who don't get anything done because they sleep all day long until the afternoon. By the time they get up, the day's almost gone over. Amen. Hello, I'm, if I'm talking about you, I, amen. Don't take offense. Just get up earlier. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Why? Why? We sleep too long. And sometimes we'll do the same thing in church. Some people come to church and, and they just lay, lay around in the pew like a bowl full of soggy cereal. It's time to wake up and understand that God is calling for us to repent and be born again. <laughs> Somebody. There's something worse than dying of Corona. And that's dying without Jesus. Amen. If I've got to leave here, let me leave with the Lord. I'm not asking for anybody to come call for me or anything like that now. But if I got to leave, I want to leave with Jesus in my soul. I want to leave right. Because it's high time. The day is far spent. It's almost over. Yes, we've been hearing this for a long time. But you think a thousand years is a long time. I think two thousand years is a long time. To God, it's just like that. To God, it's just like that. And soon and very soon, Jesus told the people, and I'm going to let you go after this scripture. Jesus told the people in the book of Luke, chapter number 21, verse number 28, 25 through verse 32. You look that up at your leisure. He told them there's going to be signs. Then he told them, he said, it's going to be earthquakes. Then he told them what? People's hearts are going to be failing them for fear of the things that are coming on this earth. You read that. And you know what he tells them that I like about it? He said, when you see these things begin to start happening, know that it's coming to time. No, he said, do what? Look up for your redemption draw nigh. You read that. Can't you look around and see the things are happening? Can't we look around and see the move of God? Can't we look around and tell that the time is going on? Look up because it's high time. It's time for us to get our house in order. Time for us to be ready. With Corona, without Corona, with tension, without tension, it's time for us to be ready for the Lord because it's high time. I hope this message has blessed you today. I hope you've got something out of it that can help your soul. More importantly, the most important thing is that you realize that the time is short. Saints, let me tell you something. Those of you listening to this video, I'm not concerned about what people are going to do with the government. I'm going to do what God has told me to do. Yes, I'm going to vote my conscience. Yes, I'm going to take my, my beliefs, my faith, and my political understanding to the polls to vote. And I encourage you to do the same thing. But before you go to the polls, go to the altar and get yourself right with God. So that whatever happens in the White House, you can be ready to go to the Lord's house. Whatever goes on downtown, you'll be ready to go uptown. Amen. Get your soul right first. Then let's put these other things in order. I'm not saying don't do them, but get the first thing the first thing. Whatever you do, repent and be baptized. Be full of the Holy Ghost. Put on the Lord. Live for God. Put away the looseness. Put away the, ki the killing. Put away the strife. Put away the anger. Put away the racism. Put away prejudice. Put away all that stuff. And put on the love of God. 
Put on the charity that God gave us. Put on peace. Put on togetherness. Put on unity. Put on faith. Put on righteousness. Be reconciled to God. That's the most important thing you can do in a time that's high. Because we need to be right with God. Do it God's way and get God's results. And God will bless you. I hope you've been blessed. May God bless you.